Native Instruments have released a piece of hardware that thankfully isn't only tied down to one piece of the software. Thank goodness that they've done this because this allows you to not only use the Machine Micro Mark III in their software, but also in other DAWs such as Logic and others, I assume. That being said, I only have experience with Logic Pro X. I think I've mentioned that in other videos before. So if you're looking to see if this controller will work with like Ableton or some other obscure DAW that I don't know about, I don't know. I'm sure there's stuff out there that you can find the answer to that question. I just don't have the answer to that question and I'm only going to be talking about Logic today. <laughs> Here we are inside of Logic and you can see that this is a completely new project. Nothing has been added, nothing has been tweaked in the slightest. This is exactly how your project will open up once you open Logic. If you take a look down here, my Machine Micro Mark III is plugged in along with my MIDI keyboard. I have my keyboard my actual typing keyboard down in this tray down here just to make it a little easier and because <laughs> there's not a ton of space in these desks they give you for college but I'm making it work so you have your project window open like this this is exactly how it's going to be opened as as soon as you make a new project you want to open up your mixer you can press X to do that so X to take it away X to bring it up you can go down here where it says e piano click these little drop down arrows You're gonna go down to where it says AU instruments go over to native instruments and then open up machine 2 and if you take a look at the controller when I open up machine 2 there were no lights on the screen wasn't even on nothing was illuminated now that we've opened the plugin we got the first pad lit up we can press buttons that light up move things around and the lights react to what we're doing so that means the controller is ready to use which is great at this point you should have no problems following along this isn't crazy difficult but it is kind of complicated once we get to recording we'll get to that a little later but at this point you should be perfectly fine now again thankfully they've made this and developed this so you're not only tied down to their work area and their software. As good as the software is, if you've seen my review, you know that it's my least favorite side of the controller. And it's honestly my biggest gripe. The software is such a pain in the butt. The machine to software, the DAW of machine land. Um, this allows you to work in whatever you want, which is fantastic. I love flexibility. I love it. This isn't really going to be a tutorial on how to use the Micro Mark III, more so how it integrates with Logic. If you want a tutorial on how to use this, I mean, let me know. I can make one. I've only had it for two or three weeks, so I'm not an expert on it. But if you'd be interested in that, let me know and I'll make it happen. We're inside of the Machine 2 plugin. You can see it looks exactly like the Machine 2 software that you would open up on your desktop. We can do pretty much everything inside this plugin, which is really nice. It's not a dumbed down version of the full software. It really is the full software just inside of a smaller window. With that being said, I'm gonna find a kit and lay down a drum beat. I'm gonna load up the licorice kit because that is one of my favorite kits so far. As you can see, when I hit a pad, it is actually moving the waveforms up over here in Logic. So it is working correctly. It's communicating correctly. And we're free to make any music we want inside this plugin. And then I'll show you how to drag it in to Logic and get our beat ready. <laughs> beat ready. And get our beat made. So this is where it gets a little wonky to start recording with the Machine Micro inside of Logic. It's a little weird. In order to change the tempo, you have to do it inside of Logic. So I'm going to go up here, I'm going to switch it to 94, which is what I'm feeling. And you'll see that inside the plugin, it automatically changed to 94. If I come up here and go to tempo, I can't, I'm spinning the dial right now and nothing is happening. That's because the plugin is more of a slave right now to the master, which is Logic. Anything you want to do, you basically have to do from Logic. Same thing applies when you want to record something. Say I want to record this drum beat. If I just do shift record, like in the Machine 2 software, I just clicked it and you can see it, it didn't count in and it, it didn't start recording. But you will notice that once I hit the record button, the red light up top does illuminate, which means it's ready to record. It's more like arming it to record instead of actually starting the recording, which honestly can be kind of nice instead of just starting right away. It's nice to have that arming, like almost ready period. <laughs> In order to start recording, you're gonna wanna go down to your keyboard or you can actually select the record button in Logic. If we go ahead and go down to our keyboard and hit R, it'll give us a four second count in and then we'll start recording inside of Logic.
we got our drum beat ready. We're running to Dragon Inside Logic. And what's nice about this plugin is that if you go over here to these descending rectangle shapes, click and hold it, it's gonna export it really quickly to an audio file. You can see pattern one is right here when, when I'm dragging around. Drag it over here and bring it right below your plugin um, section. If you drag it up here, it says not an audio track because that's actually where the instrument is. Drag it right below it, it's gonna create an audio track for you. And then right there you have your drum beat inside of Logic. Now if we go back and play it, we can actually hear our drum beat inside of Logic. For the whole rest of the beat, you're gonna want to do the exact same thing. You're gonna want to compose it inside of Machine, click and hold this export button, which will then export it to an audio file, which you can drag straight into Logic. This opens up the whole world of the Machine 2 software, which is perfect because they do have a lot of useful kits, a lot of great sound you can use, and you can still use the full potential of your controller almost and still use Logic. Now I'm gonna show you also that you can do the same exact thing with sampling. So if we go ahead and go down here, I'm gonna create a new software instrument. Go right down here, we're gonna open up another machine to instance in a separate plugin so we don't affect our drum beat any. I'm going to find the sample that I want to use. And you'll notice it's a WAV file. I have a ton of samples that are just MP3s and they do not work. For whatever reason, they have to be WAV files, that's fine. You're gonna go over to your machine micro, you're going to hit the sampling button, it's going to bring up the sampling window. You're gonna click and drag the sampler, you're gonna bring it into sound one, it's going to load it and come over here to edit, you can slice, you can put it in zones, whatever that means, I don't even know. Just for this example, I'm going to quickly have it detect some. The good old days, right? Everybody, the good old days, the good old days. Talk about it. This is a good sample. If we want the sample, we can click and drag it into sound two, into this pad. Talk about, talk about, talk, talk, talk about. I'm going to turn the polyphony down to one, which will cut the amount of voices down, then we can also come down here, turn the choke on, so they don't overlap each other. Talk about, talk about, talk, talk, talk about, talk about, talk about, talk, talk, talk about. In order to record the sample into Logic, you're going to want to make sure you have a pattern, adjust it to the right amount of bars, put the playhead back to the beginning of the track or wherever you want to record. You want to hit R, it's going to cut you for four bars. Talk about, talk about. In the pattern view of the Machine 2 software, it adds the samples in just like any other pattern, which means we can export it to an audio track just like ever, any other pattern, drag it down below, and it's going to allow us to have our sample right inside Logic. For whatever reason, sometimes with these samples and just the general audio tracks, it gives you these one bar tails at the end. I not really sure why. I always just shorten them back, bring the loop right back out to how far I want it, and then repeat the stuff I need to repeat, and then it works. Talk about. Talk about. Talk about. So anything you want to do inside Logic, you can pretty much do from the plugin that Machine has built, which is fantastic. You can sample, you can build drums, you can build melodies, you can build anything you want as long as it is inside this plugin, and then just use this export button to drag it right back into Logic and put it as an audio track, and you're good to go. You can still use your favorite plugins inside Logic. Say I want to add a reverb, I really like Platinum Reverb, that's just my uh, preference. So. So if I want to add reverb and I only want to use this plugin, then I'm still able to do so inside Logic. Even though I built the sample in the beat inside of Machine 2 software. For people that don't want to learn new software or just don't like Machine 2 software, this is a perfect workaround in order for you to still be able to use your preferred software, which is great. So I think that's going to go ahead and wrap it up for this video. I really do appreciate it. I hope you learned something. I hope this helped you. If you have any other questions, let me know down below and I'll answer them as quickly and probably immediately as possible because I always check my comments whenever they pop up. With that, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.